Hi there, I'm Patrick Brannon, Mr. Patrick from the Highlands Biological Station. Today we're going to be talking about frogs. Frogs are amphibians. So what's the difference between an amphibian and a reptile? Well, last time we learned about reptiles and we said that reptiles have scales. Amphibians have smooth, slimy skin. Amphibians also don't have claws. But the biggest thing that makes amphibians different from reptiles has to do with their reproduction. Reptiles lay soft, leathery, shelled eggs. But amphibians, like frogs, have jelly-like eggs. And they lay them in the water, not on land. So this is what frog eggs look like. You may have seen them in a pond before. They have this clear jelly-like um, substance with little, little black things in there are baby frogs developing. And when those hatch, they aren't just little baby frogs. They're tadpoles, which are very different from the adult. That's what amphibian means. Some people think it means that they come in and out of the water, but that's not it, because turtles come in and out of the water. They're reptiles. Amphibians have two life stages, an aquatic stage, the tadpole that lives in the water, and the adult stage that lives on land and breathes air. So when those jelly-like eggs hatch, they turn into tadpoles that look something like this. That doesn't look like a frog yet. It has a tail like a fish. It has to breathe water through gills. But slowly it transforms into the adult. What do we call that process? It's called metamorphosis. Butterflies do the same thing. They go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. But they start out as a tadpole. Gradually, they grow legs. Eventually, they grow lungs, and their tail shrinks. The tail doesn't fall off, it shrinks, and they become the adult frog. So here it is again. So these eggs hatch out into tadpoles. The tadpoles grow legs and lungs lose their tail, and eventually become the adult frog that lives on land. And that's the frog's life cycle. Now let's talk about some differences between frogs and toads. This is a bullfrog. It's aquatic. It lives in the pond. So the bullfrog has long legs and webbed feet for swimming. It also has eyes on top of his head. That way he can hide beneath the water to stick his eyes up above the water, like a periscope. His nostrils are on top of his head for the same reason. These big circles you see are his eardrums. Ours are down inside of his head, or our, our head, but his are on the sides. And sometimes you can tell boys from girls by their eardrums. Boys often have bigger eardrums. Now let's look at a live toad, or frog. Is this a toad or a frog? Well, it's both. It is a toad, but toads are a type of frog, just like the bullfrog is a type of frog. But toads are more terrestrial. They live on land. They do very little swimming. So he has shorter legs, and his feet have very little webbing compared to the bullfrogs. Here's a picture you can see the difference. Bullfrogs have lots of webbing for swimming, but toads have dry, bumpy feet, thick feet, for digging and walking. They live in holes in the ground. So being on land, he has to have extra defenses. He can't just jump in the swim away like the bullfrog can. So he relies heavily on his camouflage. He'll blend in with the dirt. The bullfrog will also blend in with the water. His belly is white. Is that camouflaged? Actually, it is. Because when they're in the pond, things could be looking up at them. So their white belly blends in with the sky. Toads have dry, bumpy skin. Some people call these warts. They're not actually warts. You can't catch warts from frogs or toads. That's a myth. But notice these really big bumps on the back of his neck. 
Those are poison glands. Toads have those. If a dog or something catches them and puts them in his mouth, white milky poison will drip from these glands. Now, it doesn't kill the dog, usually, but it will cause him to spit out the toad so that he can escape. He'll also puff his body up. See how he gets kind of like a balloon? He's trying to look bigger, but also being blown up like a balloon makes him harder to swallow. And lastly, if he gets really scared, he might go to the bathroom on you. You'll get startled and drop him and the toad can escape. So those are some main differences between frogs and toads. Okay, so we're gonna feed the toad. Now frogs and toads have lots of adaptations for eating. One of course is a big long sticky tongue, but the other thing is that their eyeballs are used to help push the food down their throat. So when they swallow, their eyeballs sink into their skull. So let me give them an earthworm and we'll see what happens. You see his eyeballs sink in his head? Pretty cool. All right, so that kind of toad is called an American toad. You can tell it because it has a dry, bumpy skin, but each wart has a, is a single one. We also have a, another kind of toad called a Fowler's toad. Fowler's toad are very similar, but they have little clusters of warts. Next we have the bullfrog. Bullfrogs are aquatic and they're really large. We also have the green frog, which looks similar, but it's smaller and has that little ridge down its back. We also have one called a pickerel frog. It's a smaller frog with little black squares on its back. We also have wood frogs, which are brown with a black mask. Then we have some tree frogs. The most common is the spring peeper. It's this little brownish frog with a brown X on his back. We also have gray tree frogs. You can see they blend in really well with tree bark. And then occasionally we have one called cricket frogs, which are teeny tiny and they hop around and look like crickets. You need to also listen for frogs. Much like birds, you can identify species by their calls. Frogs call to attract mates, so it's just the boys. The American toad is a really long whistle. Sounds like this. The Fowler's toad is similar, but it has short whistle blasts. It's more like a referee whistle going root, root. The bullfrog, because it's really, really big, has a really deep, deep call, like a cow, like a bull. The green frog sounds like a banjo string being plucked, or a rubber band, it's toink, 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 toink. Oop, that's not it. Let me try again. So you sound like a banjo. The pickerel frog sounds like it's snoring. It goes, ow, ow. The wood frog is a winter breeder. It sounds like a bunch of chickens clucking. Oop, I can find the right button. Okay, let me play it again. Okay, so chickens or ducks. The spring peeper, of course, peeps. The gray tree frog is this loud vibration sound. 
and the northern cricket frog sounds like a bunch of clicking pebbles, like click, 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 click. So go out at night and see what you can hear. All right, so we're going to be listening for some frog calls now. We're at a pond, and if you listen very carefully, you should be able to hear two different sounds of frogs. So listen very carefully. So the loud beep, 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 beep that you hear, that's the spring peeper. That's the little small tree frog. It's brown and has a brown X on its back. In the background, you'll hear another species. Listen carefully. So that loud sound in the background. That's the American toad. We have two species of toads that live here. The American toad has that really long, sustained call. The other one we have is called a fowler's toad, but it has little short whistle blasts. These are some frogs that you hear in very early spring. Now back in the winter, back in February, you may have heard wood frogs. They're winter breeders, but they're done now. They sound like clucking chickens, like a buck, 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 buck. but they're finished now. So next come the toads and the peepers. Once summer comes along, the toads will have finished breeding, and you won't hear them anymore. Instead, you'll start hearing green frogs, which sounds like a banjo string being plucked. It's like, bling, 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 bling. And bullfrogs, which have that deep, like a cow. You may also hear gray tree frogs, which are little small tree frogs, like the peeper, um, but they're gray, and they have a really loud uh, vibration sound, like, Right here, we have a bullfrog. See if I can zoom in on him a little better. There we go. If you listen carefully, you can hear another frog calling. It's a pickerel frog. Listen to the snore. It'll do it in a minute. Did you hear it just then? Okay, so I encourage you to go out and listen for frogs and see what you can find if you have a pond near your house. Um, and until then, please visit us at highlandsbiological.org and I'll see you next time.